Wow, wow, wow. All right, let's begin. So we're going to talk about some list formatted, exciting stuff. There we go. Let's bat over here to our classic Warrior Horses site, as we do, right? Now, uh, as you are all aware, uh, the uh, the annual Tournament of Hooves is already well underway, right? So the Tournament of Hooves is a very exciting event where the horses battle for blood, battle and glory and murder and whatever else, right? Uh, but the idea is that uh, they're, of course, managing all of this in SharePoint, as we all do. Right, so they've created a list, right, for their tournament called the Tournament of Hooves. All right, so let's head on over there, and it's an exciting list. Right, you'll see there are 16 teams, and they are competing across 15 matches, right, for their glory, and who shall be the greatest warrior horse of all time. So this is okay, right? I mean, we could do it this way. I mean, you could clearly read the information. You could see this team went over this team, right, and maybe we could pick the winner here, and that's cool. Uh, or we can put a format on this thing, right? So let's check out our bracket, right? So this is a 16-team uh, single elimination tournament. There we go. All right, so what we've done here is we've drawn this with uh, list formatting, right? Uh, one key difference here is we are drawing uh, these as individual rows, not as a single massive row. And I'll get into that in a little more detail in just a moment here and why that's important. Uh, that is, we can do this, and let's take a look at what that might look like if we were, let's just split this view uh, with uh, this guy, right? So I'm just using the edge split so I can just see both the list here, so I can edit it, right? So we can mark a winner, right? So if studs versus neighbors, we're going to say the studs win, right? And then if we refresh that, because uh, I don't want to wait on it. No, let's refresh this one, not that other one, right? Uh, we can see, hey, studs is now bold, right? Neighbors has been crossed out, and the line is no longer dotted, right? We start to get solid, right? Then we need to come down here, so that means match number nine, of course. Studs is going to be the team here. All right, studs, you're up. All right, we don't know who they're up against yet. You know, if we refresh that. Oh, dang, I keep refreshing the wrong one. You're to refresh this one over here. There we go. We can see studs has moved on to the next guy here, and we know that this is to be determined because the lady horses and the lucky lasers have not yet matched off. Right, so as you can see, we can start to go down here and we can uh, mark these as we go. Um, we can see who's winning, right? Uh, we can come down here, we can say cute bunnies versus the bronies. Um, obviously, the bronies would win and completely destroy those cute bunnies, as we all know. You know, so let's click over here, let's refresh this guy, and so on, right? So we can keep going through it like that, and this thing will draw it all out uh, nice and evenly. Wow, 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 wow. So let's take a look at how we're doing that uh, behind the scenes. Uh, rather than watching me fill out a bracket uh, here in a list, even though that is very exciting. Let's make that bigger. Ooh, prettier. All right, so the way this is working um, is these teams, right? You'll notice I'm just picking a team, yet we have this icon and other information here, uh, is coming from the herds list, right? So we have a herds list here where I have specified the team name, right? And then I've got the Background icon, this is a Fluent UI icon name, All right, a foreground icon, which is optional, and then you specify background colors or foreground colors. And you can see I have a lovely little format here that is just drawing those so I can preview them. Um, if we take a look at that in isolation, all right, we can see that a little bigger. There we go. Let's make this guy come on over here, and we'll make that bigger. I'm using the SP formatter. Well, the SP formatter didn't work there. Let's enhance that again. Let's try that one more. There we go. Okay. The idea is I just want to see this code all together. Uh, you can see it's pretty basic. Well, I say it's pretty basic. It's not that basic. Uh, the idea is right, we have a, a parent div. We're using a relative position on that. Um, and then inside we use uh, absolute position just to layer those icons on top of each other, right? So we've got the background icon just being drawn with that icon name property. Um, some position information here along with the color. All right, and then we come down here and we can see that we're also doing the foreground icon, right? And we're saying if you don't specify color, you get white. And then we're just slightly shrinking it down and position it in the middle. So that's it for how we draw the icons. Uh, but by doing this, right, we can contain all of that information. Now, you might do this differently, right? Like, I like to use the icons, right? And you can find all sorts of fun icons here over on Flycon.io. And if you filter by solid, right, you can find all sorts of really uh, good ones that are great for tinier icons that you're trying to overlay like that with each other. Uh, but if we head back over here to the herds, um, you can also do things like, hey, I just want to put an image URL, right? 
I would say you won't be able to use an image column or some other stuff, and the reason for that is I am using projected fields or uh, additional columns, you want to call them that. All right, so if we take a look at our list, all right, so this guy right here, column settings, we edit this column, you'll see what I mean by that is I've got to look up to that herds list, right? I'm just pulling the title because that's the name of the team. And then I've got these additional columns. So I'm saying, yeah, make sure you give me the icon, the color, the icon, and the color, right? That way I can use them over here in my other format so I can also draw them. And that's what I'm doing to pull those over. We've looked at, at how you might uh, do that a number of times. Uh, there are limitations on these projected fields, right? Like I mentioned, the image column won't be projected. You can't use those. Uh, even things like the choice column won't be projected. Uh, so that can be irritating. But uh, that's okay. You're just trying to make some of this stuff work, and maybe you're not managing some of this data in the list anyway, right? Maybe you're pulling some of this information in from a Power App or somewhere else. Okay, anyway, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so the way that works over here, then I have... What's actually behind the bracket list looks a little more like this data-wise, right? So you can see I've got all of those projected fields with these beautiful names here. They're so beautiful, right? So SharePoint's come a long way in terms of the names, right? We can put a name with a space. It no longer puts that percent 20 by default. Projected fields are still in like 2010 mode or whatever, right? So projected fields still get incredibly ugly names. Um, and in fact, we can see those that we jump to code on this bracket, right? So let's just uh, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, we don't need you anymore. Bye. Right, so let's just take a look at the code here. Blah, blah. Let's uh, enable the enhanced formatter, right? So enable that guy again, again, so I can make it big, so we can see it a little easier. Okay. All right, so what are we doing here? All right, and uh, how are we layering this stuff up and how are we projecting these things? And the only thing I wanted to look at first is looking at how those values look, right? So this is what one of those projected columns looks like, right? That is the background icon. This is the background color. Thank you, SharePoint. So beautiful, right? Now, again, I got those, but I just went to the uh, list settings and I clicked on the column and then I copied it out of the query string, right? So you can get those this way. Uh, but these do have a predictable naming pattern. Um, you can take a look at that, but okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so now, real quick, I want to take a look at the theory behind this, and then we'll see how it actually got implemented. So I've shown this before, but this is important here. This is kind of basic column formatting, right? So if you go to column formatting, and you format that column, when you apply your format, right, that format is then drawn on each and every row each time, right? So your format does not have access to other rows, right? I can't compare values against the next, you know, the next row or previous rows, Anything like that, I can access some aggregate information, but again, that's only in the aggregate section and so on, right? But the idea here is the whole format is evaluated every time on every row. And that's an important concept when you start looking at the kind of thing we're doing here, right? And the approach. So the view formatting complications. So that works great for column formats, right? Because that's pretty much exactly what you want. You want it to draw every time. But if you're trying to draw something with a row format, that's where you control the entire thing, right? So we're not just doing additional row classes. Uh, we're not necessarily just trying to do uh, specific rows. Um, you know, I mean, you can see that, like if you take a look at something like this, right? We're using row format, but you can still see these are individual rows, right? You can kind of see that there's no unified uh, approach, kind of like we're seeing here in the bracket, which it all looks together. So what's the difference, right? Uh, so when you're doing the row format, right, everything is drawn every time, all right? And you can't determine if things are last. You can't determine if they're first using the row index. That's the positional uh, position <laughs> drawn. Uh, and I'll say here, if you want to draw everything and really have full control, you need to hide selection because that uh, takes away some of the extra stuff that SharePoint's sticking in there. Okay, so what am I talking about here? I'm talking about a conditional elements approach. Right, so there's the idea of the traditional row format where you're stacking up the rows, maybe doing other stuff. Conditional elements approach is stacking them not, uh, you know, one after the other, but literally on top of each other. Right, so that's what we're doing, and then we're using dynamic display using conditions. In our case, we're using the row index for position based, uh, but you can also do, you know, column based. Like if I wanted to use the actual match name or something like that. So the key here is because they are stacked, you're relying on absolute positioning. And if you're not careful, you can kill your tooltips, hover panels, links, and more, and be sad. So let's take a look at that. 
And what I mean by that, right? So you'll notice up here, uh, I could come over here and I could say, here's match one, here's team one. What if I wanted to add a tooltip, right? Because you'll see, like, for instance, uh, down here, right, like Steeds of Steel here, their name gets cut off, right? Because it's a little too long and doesn't fit the bracket. We've got the text ellipses for that. That's great, but maybe we want to put a tooltip, right? So we're just going to say attributes, and then we're going to say title. And in this case, we just want to put the full name, right? So that would be the team one dot lookup value, right? There you go. So now technically what that should do, right? And that's going to auto preview because I'm in the SP formatter is that should give me that. But you, what's not, what's happening here is because we're drawing this every time, this div, this base div that we're holding everything is being drawn over it every time because it's transparent. We don't see it that way. We don't see it being layered quite that way. And you'll see that each one of these matches is just checking what row index it's at. Uh, you can see over here, it's, uh, this is still the vertical line. Uh, I see row index one for that vertical line for two, right, and so on. So we're, we're literally turning these off. We're drawing them every time, except we're turning them individually off the elements. But if I wanted to fix that, what I can do is, because I'm using absolute positioning and I'm not relying on that outer box, um, I can just make it really tiny, right? So let's just make it five pixels by five pixels. You'll see it doesn't actually change anything because I'm not hiding the overflow. And now I should be able to come over here uh, and in fact, I've turned on inline edit field. Oh, I forgot I have that in there. Inline edit field, right, is now available. So you could edit these things directly if you wanted, right, instead of going back to that list. Uh, if you want to be able to update these things, you provide that experience. Uh, but we also have the tooltip studs is showing up. Um, and the idea is we're breaking that layering. We can't quite, we can't do that with Z index because, again, we are stacking these things so we could really just make that tiny. Now, if I wanted to do something, right, where I wanted to uh, show this with a border, Right, and I wanted to put a border around it or a special background. Well, obviously, I don't want to turn that really tiny. So what I could do is keep this root element that way and then add a child, just like the other ones, that is the background, and then I would only show that on the first one. Okay, so wow, wow, wow. So the concept here, just to wrap it up here, is when you are doing the conditional elements approach like this where we're stacking everything on top of each other, the power in this uh, compared to some of the other approaches is say if we were doing like a bar chart something like that and we've got lots of samples like this and they're great uh, but they generally require really wide uh, list items right because you have to have all of the information you need you know so you have to have every value every point in the series uh, within a single item right and so then you end up with these lists with a single item in them which is kind of well it's kind of silly right you're, you're therefore matching all of your data to match your UI, which isn't really the way real life works a lot of times, right? So this is a way to take data that exists across multiple rows and put it in a single unified view. It is a complicated advanced way to do it, but I just want to show that off. This sample is available as the tournament bracket sample. And I think that is it. There's the links and that's it for me. Wow. -wee!